Sedent Productions Incorporated, Silverman and Silverman, Sims, Gerald. 4205. It's the beginning of another business day in the city, 9.30. But for Mr. Sims, time as we know it is about to stop. In a few moments, he will be hurled back into the dark abyss of the past, where every moment is an eternity. Mr. Sims is about to penetrate the psychic barrier. Now, for this journey, no passport is required, no visa. In Mr. Sims' case, he already has what he needs. A guilty conscience. The high stone hives of the city are alive now with their busy human bees droning into telephones, flicking away at typewriters. But for Gerald Sims, respected vice president of Fidelity Import-Export Company. This day will bring the shock of his life. Paragraph. It is anticipated that we can make delivery at the Port of Marseille on the 1st of July, provided we hear from you by the 20th of this month. The merchandise will be shipped in bond. Yes? I'm sorry, Mr. Sims, but... Mr. Dickinson called again asking to see that letter. He says it must go out right away. You can tell Mr. Dickinson? No, don't tell him that. It's almost done. I'll listen to it and then you can have it. I trust this answers all of your questions and the business can be consummated with all possible dispatch. Very sincerely yours. fooling with my dictaphone. Why, the dictaphone, no one. Is it broken? Who can get in here? Who has a key? I have one, the cleaning woman. <laughs> Perhaps I can fix it. No, 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 don't touch it. Well, maybe a new record. No, never mind. If you would like to dictate no, to later, me, I... Later, Miss Wells. But Mr. Dickinson no, is... No, please, ready. Miss Wells, just leave me alone.
anything wrong, Fran? No, I, I guess I'm just not very good at living like this. You know, everywhere I go, I imagine that someone's following me. Oh, that's silly. Even when perfect strangers look at me, I, I think they must know all about it. Jerry, I hate this guilty feeling. Guilty of what? Dancing together a few times, having dinner? We don't have something more to feel guilty about. Anything happened today, particularly? Did you hear from Douglas? Mm -hmm. I had a letter from him. It's hot in Guatemala. And the dam is two weeks behind schedule. And he won't be back home until July. That's more like it. amounts of some poisonous liquor. Your name's Mr. Atterturk. Atterturk? Oh, no. That's even worse than it was last week. Who was I then? Oh, I, uh, I was Sir Derek Highlandite Esquire, uh, going on 78 and terribly interested in sick room supplies, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, this is awful. How oh, awful? To have to act like thieves stealing every minute, every hour. Sitting in dark corners and out of the way places. Wondering how long it will be until what we feel for each other isn't a secret any longer. Charlie isn't getting any easier either. I know. It's the same for me. There's nothing we can do about it. There's no way out, is there? Well, if it isn't good old Jerry Finn. Oh, Tom. Well, what a break running into you. Saves me a dime. I was going to call you. <laughs> Just got into town with some of the boys for oh, the meeting. Yeah. Mrs. Sims, I presume? Uh, Didn't know old Jerry had such a good eye. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't stand there, Jerry. Introduce her. Uh, friend, uh, this is Tom Crookshank, an old friend of mine from Chicago. Yeah, an old friend is going to buy us all a great big drink. Oh, no, uh, Tom, thanks. Well, no, we can't. Uh, we have a dinner date. In fact, we're late now. Uh, call me tomorrow, huh? Oh, one for the road. No, no, we really mustn't. Thanks. It's good to see you, though, huh? Give us a rain check. Thank you, madam. What can I say? I could have danced all night. The pleasure was entirely mine, Mr. Twinkletoes. <laughs> you know, I'm going to have about 17 more of these. Hmm. What a hangover you'll have tomorrow. There isn't going to be any. Yeah, you want to bet? I mean, there isn't going to be any tomorrow. Not for us. What brought all that on? Too much brandy? Because that man I hardly know saw us over there? Tell me. I don't know, Jerry. Maybe, maybe all that. Maybe a lot more. I don't know. My father was a very good gambler, you know. And he used to say to me, Honey, play it smart. Quit while you're ahead. Well, that's what I'm going to do. It isn't going to be easy, Jerry. I'm, I'm a little weak where you're concerned. But I'm going to do it, and you're going to have to help me. Help you? By forgetting me, by not calling me. Just erase me. That's impossible. I can't do that, neither can you. Turn love on and off like that? But, Jerry, we're ahead. Let, let's leave it there. 
before anything sordid happens. Like what? Being discovered? Like something even worse, like beginning to hate each other for what we might do to the people that trust us. Or like falling out of love. Jerry, I couldn't stand that. You're not a very good judge of character. I couldn't do that. I'm not a fickle fellow. When I find someone like you, I hold on to them no matter what. Jerry, I love you so much. But I've made up my mind. I want you to give your marriage another chance. And you? I'm going to try. I'm going to try the very best I can. If it doesn't work. Who knows? Well, I know one thing. I love you. And no one's going to take you away. Ever. Well, shall we? Drink and be merry. I can't see. I can't see. It's all black. I want to go home. Take me home, please. Please. Oh, oh my God. Oh. Jerry, what are we going to do? Jerry, do something. Police, let's get the police. No, wait, wait. Look, Jerry. He's dead. There, there, there isn't anything that anybody can do for him. No. Well, why must we ruin our lives? Jerry, my little girl's life. I'll get you home first. You mustn't be mixed up in this. Then I'll go for the police. Jerry, I'll do anything you want now and always. Come on, let's get out of here. <laughs> his mother. Oh, Jerry, his mother will be waiting for it. His poor mother. <laughs> Oh, Jerry, what's wrong? We've got to turn around and go back. What if it happens? I'll face it with you. I was as much to blame as you were. We've got to turn around and go back. Jerry, we've got to. Now, listen to me. Don't you hear me? I heard you the first time. Now, stop it. You're going home. No, I was wrong, Jerry. I can't. Pull yourself together, friend. Pull yourself together, friend. Now, when you get home, I want you to call the doctor. The doctor can't do it yet. Can you just call him? Tell him you think something's wrong with Jill. Jill? Anything wrong with Jill? You tell him you think she's running a slight fever, you want to know what to do. Already we're beginning to act like criminals. That's what they call an alibi, isn't it? What if the doctor does decide to come over? I don't think he will. Not this late at night, and not unless you break down on the phone. Now, you do what I tell you. Jerry, did I wake you? Oh. No, I'm all right. I'm at the office. I'm waiting for call from London. Yeah, the time difference messes everything up. Well, I got rid of him an hour ago. Got the order, too. Oh, uh, Janet, there's the call on the other line. Would you call me back in five minutes, say? No, you call me. Janet. Janet, do you remember that coat you wanted? Which one? I'm afraid it was the mink one. <laughs> you can have it. No, I'm cold sober. You can buy it tomorrow. That phone call was worth waiting for. I got the order. 
Mm-hmm. I'm coming home now. Does that mean anything to you? Good. Me too. I'll see you. Faces of guilt, worn by those bewitched by the most implacable, the most terrible enemy of all, conscience. For Gerald Sims and Francis Hiller, it was the longest year of their lives. Now when they meet, they have only one thing to talk about. Jerry, I can't stand it. Francis, believe me, it's over. It's over. So he thought. Gerald Sims was mighty sure that the year's silence about the death of the boy meant that everything was safely behind him. Over. So he thought. with you. Are you all right? Of course I'm all right. What's so tough about that letter? You've written stuff like that hundreds of times. Well, it's important. I want to get it right. Then the thing went on the blink. Uh, play the letter back. Maybe I can help. Well, come on, man. Uh, turn it on. No, no, no. I, I want to do it all again. I'll bring it up to you ready to go. You look sick. I'm going to give you an assist. No, no, Here. no. It's no good. I want to do the whole thing over. You're acting like a guilty bank teller when an examiner shows up. You need a doctor or something? I've told you I'm all right. Just give me an hour. I promise I'll have it. Well, have it your way. And have it in an hour. Ms. Wells? Yes, sir? Get me another record, please, for the dictaphone. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I'll put it on for no, you. No, no, no. Just give it to me. I'll do it. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Wells. Dear sir. <clears throat> Dear sir. Dear sir. <clears throat> Dear sir. I can't see. I can't see. It, it's all black. I want to go home. Take me home. Please. Where? Thank you. Mr. 
Mrs. Hiller, please. Yes, I can hear you. Fran, listen. Something's happened. Somebody knows. I keep hearing a voice on my dictaphone. It's his voice. It sounds exactly the way his voice sounded that night. Jimmy, what's the matter with you? Are you out of your mind? Fran, listen. I've got to see you tonight. You've got to listen to this, too. Maybe... Maybe I am sick. You must hear it, too. Maybe the voice isn't there at all. Please, Fran, tonight. I'll be there. Goodbye. He was no ways near me when, for no reason, he goes off the road. I don't know, maybe it was one of those optical illusions. Optical illusion. That's possible. It's possible. A few hours ago, Mrs. Frances Hiller walked into the 23rd Precinct Station and told the police that she couldn't stand it any longer. She referred, in a near hysterical state, to a voice heard on this dictaphone. The voice of a young man dead for one year. The police have already listened to this evidence, and this is what they heard. Dear sir. <coughs> Dear sir. Dear sir. Dear sir. That's all they heard, despite the tearful claims of Mrs. Hiller. Do you know that conscience is a potent enemy? It has been known to create a voice of its own, a voice of doom, heard usually only by the guilty. However, psychic phenomena offers many reported instances of an apparitional manifestation, wherein the victim has appeared to the guilty long after the event. Now, isn't it possible that in the case of the guilty, in mind and heart, that they could also receive an auditory manifestation. In this case, a voice from beyond the grave. Isn't it possible? In a moment, a word about next week. Coming on our call presents in the weeks ahead, is a particularly powerful collection of case histories from the world of the occult, which is just one step beyond our understanding, but is nevertheless somewhere out there. You won't want to miss a single one of these exciting episodes.